it. All right, we got cut off before, Nathan. Uh, yeah, we were talking sorry. about Dig It. So tell me about what's going on with Dig It. I mean, I saw a bunch of pictures of you online at the Dig It warehouse and it looks like you're doing a new frame or something. So talk about that a bit, clear that, clear all that up. Well, um, pretty simple. I uh, just got uh, in touch with Santa again, the owner of, uh, of Dig It there, and uh, I'm designing a couple, of, a couple of parts, starting with some stems right now and then looking at doing some frames later on. But, uh, for Flatland or? Well, it's actually going to be street, which is weird, maybe a okay. Flatlander. But, uh, What's your thinking behind that? Well, um, I don't want to compete against my friends in the, in the, in the Flatland market and also the, the street market. But you're quite a competitive guy, though. Uh, well, no, well, well, especially when it comes to pool, eh? Yes, and I do remember the last time that you beat me. So before we leave, hey, friend, I'm, I'm dead, a, right? We're having a rematch. <laughs> So just to clear everything up. Is it true you bought a pool table to beat Phil Dolan? Is no, that right? No, I didn't need to buy a pool table to beat <laughs> Phil Dolan. I remember I made him bring, break his own cue once, though. Really? Uh, yes. Wow, that's a good one. I we like bought that. one in, we, when I was living with Phil in Spain, and um, we'd go out and we'd play as much pool as we rode. We were at, we were, you have addictive personalities, I think. Yeah. And uh, very competitive for both of us. Yeah. <clears throat> and... Um, so we were out and we were at the pool hall and I, we might have been betting money or probably so, paying for beer that night. Or when can we expect to see some product from, from oh, you? Oh, yeah, back to the products. Um, What's the company called, if, if well, it's anything? It's called Southern Cross BMX. Okay. And um, it, it's, some, it's a constellation that has a lot to do with direction. And I think it has a lot to do with the way my life's always been. I've always headed south. Uh, lived in uh, Central America for a long time, South America. I like that, yeah. Coming That's not immediately the... obvious, I like that. Yeah. The what? That's not immediately obvious. No, it's not immediately obvious. Um, but it's something, uh, the constellations, uh, the celestial navigation, I mean, the sailing and other things. Yeah. Uh, not as much as maybe Alex Humelin has. Really. He looks like he's become quite a sailor. <laughs> Pirate. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so the, we'll have some parts done in a couple of weeks. And uh, our first order is getting shipped out, so hopefully we get some more orders and go from there. You just... Uh, so how do you test that product, being a flatland rider? Well, um, I'll have some of my friends that are street riders ride it. So, okay. Yeah. We'll uh, make sure everything's uh, ship shape. It's going to be uh, uh, the best material, uh, best aluminum, and the best machining possible made in the United States at reasonable prices uh, to be accessible to kids around the world that are, you know, maybe don't have a lot of money in third world countries or. I mean, yeah. Sure. Uh, to, to give them an opportunity and to give me an opportunity to you know, start uh, have my own business. So. There still no, there still needs to be the hundred dollar flatland bike as well, right? There should be, yeah, because yeah. kids won't be able. It's like skateboarding. Why skateboarding? It's yeah. easy to get a thirty, forty dollar skateboard. It's accessible, isn't it? But it is difficult to to produce a bike for you know, well made one, obviously high high. Yeah. It's difficult to produce, but um, yeah, if flatland is a sport that would probably grow a lot more if there's more accessible products and yeah. bikes to kids. What, what do you see what do you see when you look at Flatland now as like you've been away from it for a while, like from from the actual the, the contest, contest scene. What what do you see? Um it's not, it hasn't changed a lot, but I <clears throat> I just remember it as being a little bit more fun. I mean <clears throat> meeting up now with all the old friends uh, from around the world, uh, you know, everybody's ten years older than they were when you were Sure, yeah. Yeah. But um is that how long it is? Ten years. Everybody's a little bit more easygoing, quieter, and not so competitive. I not guess. so stiff. Yeah, but uh, now I don't know. Uh, the Japanese guys always bring a good uh, flavor into our sport. They always bring a little bit of uh, spice and, and, and happiness, you know, and outgoingness, which our sport needs more. We can't be yeah so cold and rigid and rigid. Mm. Yeah, that's a good word. <laughs> you used to ride for rigid. That's yeah, pretty that was funny. My first, that was my first sponsor. <laughs> Well, Morales was my first one, but yeah. First, oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. But the first guys, you know, it, it, it hooked me up with paying tickets and, and traveling. Okay. Boom.